Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's been a hot minute since I've been in this couch for us to talk about the goings on in the tech world, but we are back and I'm so glad to see your smiling faces here. Let's go ahead and try to get into as much tech news as I possibly can of everything that's come out in the last few days. But before we do, I wanna let you know that today's hot news is brought to you by betterhelp.com. If you don't know them, betterhelp.com is an affordable online professional counseling service that can give you counseling wherever you need it, whenever you need it, because it's on the internet and it ranges from 35 to 65 dollars per week which is an affordable rate if you can't afford that there is sponsorship available for anybody who might need to cut a little cost off of that but if you want to help out your mental health or you have some actual counseling that you need whatever you need to use the service for it's something that i think is very much important something that's probably not talked about enough in the tech space there's no problem in actually getting counseling if you need it and especially if you're just trying to stay healthy just like you work out to maintain your physical health getting counseling to maintain your mental health it's all the same. So if you want to support hot news and get some counseling at the same time, you can check out the link in the video description, betterhelp.com forward slash UFD to get started with counseling right away. With that sponsor spot out of the way, let's just jump into hot news, which I haven't done ever in forever. I haven't done it in a while. You know what also has taken a lot of time? 10 years. The reason I bring that up is because Google Chrome is now a decade old. As of September 2nd, 2008, the world changed forever when a beautiful blue, green, red, yellow, baby blue thing the web browser was birthed into the world and we were brought the modern web browsing experience. Obviously, this doesn't mean to any anything to anybody who's still on Firefox or the people who say Safari so is the best. Anyways, we've had a decade with Google Chrome. You're welcome. Thank you, Google. Can't wait to see what else you change our lives with. Don't kill me. Do you remember back to Computex? That was also a long time ago. I'm just bringing up long dates at this point. Well, and you might remember that Asus actually announced some AIO water coolers back in the day, and they've kinda unveiled them. Overclockers.uk has the ROG Ryuo on sale right now, which has the RGB ring around it. But then the other one that was supposed to have like that digital LED display, that one's not on sale. Yeah, no, he's lying in this one. Both of them have displays and it's OLED and an LED. And then if you go to like Asus's website, like the product pages are kind of there, but also not there for some of these. And the pre-order price on the Rio 240 millimeter is 160 pounds, which is a lot of money for an AIO. So the like, it looks like Asus has launched these while also at simultaneously not launching anything at all. So basically like everything else that they've done in their lives, that didn't make any sense. I don't know why I was casting shade there. Asus, you're good in my book. You know what else takes a long time because time is the hot topic of today, Battlefield 5, which in case you didn't hear, they've actually delayed by a month because they didn't want to compete with Red Dead Redemption 2 and also Call of Duty Black Ops 4. They're getting no hype for this whatsoever. And also the fact that ray tracing probably isn't going to be ready because Nvidia only gave them the information for that like two weeks prior to the Gamescom announcement. That whole mushkin aside, like Battlefield 5 is in a bad place, but they've announced PC spec requirements for their beta. So in case you want to play it, you need a minimum of an i5 6600K or an FX6350, which I don't believe for a hot second because the last time somebody tried to play Battlefield 1 on a quad core, their systems got wrecked. They recommend a 1050 with the GTX 660 alternative or an 80 or an or an AMD 7850. And then for recommended specs, you're looking at a 1063 gig or an RX 484 gig, which those aren't compa comparable. They should have been a 470. Anyways, apparently you can see the NVIDIA nerfing coming in right there with it being an NVIDIA title. And then also the CPU recommended is a 4790 or an FX 8350. We'll see how that goes. Those sound a little low to me compared to how like Battlefield 1 ran on lower end hardware. I don't think Battlefield 5 is going to do any better here. But then we also have Shadow of the Tomb Raider revealed specs, which is coming out in two weeks with no no ray tracing, mind you. Uh, they're not launching with that whatsoever. You'll probably have played the game three to four times over before Square Enix releases the patch for NVIDIA shadow tracing or all of that good stuff. So minimum specs on Shadow of the Tomb Raider are an i3-30-2020 with a 1050 or an HD 7770, and the recommended is a 4770K or a Ryzen 5 1600 with a 1066 gig or an RX 488 gig. Mediocre specs for a game that admittedly, when I saw the demos, doesn't look like they've improved quality all over the years. Ray tracing aside, textures haven't gotten better. I'm not impressed. Are you guys impressed with this game? 
That's a glass table. Let me know right up there. Pixel 3 XL should be launching sometime soon, which will be great, but apparently some uh, Lyft driver actually got to have a sneak peek hands-on with it because somebody had left it behind in the ride-sharing car after their trip and then took pictures with it and shared it to the internet, as you can see in the pictures here. So basically everything we've expected about the Pixel 3 is confirmed giant notch looks nearly the same except for that notch because notches are in season. What else is in season? What fruit's in season? Strawberries are coming back in season. You suck. Strawberries are good in smoothies. I don't like to eat raw strawberries though. What? The texture bothers me. It's not the flavor, it's the texture. I'll take a smoothie over a raw strawberry, all right? Strawberries! <laughs> the Pixel 3 strawberry, in season, hot and fresh. Now let's talk about clickbait titles, because this is the clickbaitiest title that you might ever see on Tech Power Up, saying AMD Fast Track 7 nanometer Navi GPU to late 2018 alongside Zen 2 CPUs. That sounds super exciting, doesn't it? Well, they're basically just clickbaiting a press release from AMD, which says nothing like that because the quoted uh, 2018 things that they're talking about is this sentence right here. AMD's next major milestone is the introduction of our upcoming seven nanometer product portfolio, including the initial products with our second generation Zen 2 CPU core and our new Navi GPU architecture. No mention of date whatsoever. Then they continue to talk. We've already taped out multiple seven nanometer products at TSMC, including our first seven nanometer GPU planned to launch later this year. We already knew that was coming. That's Vega seven nanometers. They announced that at Computex. This is not Navi coming any sooner. So if you read this article, don't be alarmed. It's just clickbait. AMD's Navi probably sometime next year, maybe. That's basically everything that I've been reading. Oh, uh, we'll see, we'll see. I don't know if the PlayStation 5 is gonna launch first or if we're getting a Navi on desktop, but AMD has to do something because if they can come in at like the $500 in under price point right now, they would take over the market because not a whole lot of people are gonna be buying RTX from what I can tell. Let me know, AMD Navi or RTX Turing, click that poll, two polls, one hot news. You're welcome, gotta make up for lost time. Speaking of lost time, you know what's been lost in time? Doom 2, and apparently there's been an Easter egg that has been hidden in that game for roughly 24 years at this point, and now has finally been unlocked by somebody figuring out a secret teleporter that you could only get to when an enemy pushed you onto the platform, and then you could actually complete the game. It's all in a YouTube run that you can find at the link right up there. And if you wanna watch somebody do something really cool in a game that's older than our video editor, go ahead and do it. We've got a lot of Intel stuff to talk about. And by a lot, I mean really disappointing things besides the GPU side of things because we need more GPU competition. Anyways, so Intel has apparently revealed that the key difference between Coffee Lake and Whiskey Lake, which should be coming out in a few weeks, it appears that Whiskey Lake will have hardware patches for Meltdown instead of the software ones that impact performance quite considerably, it's gonna be baked in at the hardware level. So essentially, same architecture, not as vulnerable to some of the bugs because it only fixes against variants three and five, not all of them. Fantastic job, Intel, protecting the world from small things with your new updates that you're barely gonna provide anything with because let's move on to the next bit of Intel news and it's Intel's processor supply shortfall could mean that we don't get our core i9-9900Ks this year, but rather next year. So while the new chips are expected to launch in October, there's been a lot of information about Intel falling behind on 14 nanometer production, including having to stop the production of their own motherboards, which we reported on a couple weeks ago, months ago in hot news. We've been doing this for a while, and it appears that the new CPU launch isn't gonna be any different. We also talked about how uh, this Coffee Lake refresh would be a paper launch launch, and it looks like all indications are continuing to point to that. There might be reviews coming out in October, there might be actual a couple of retail samples out there, but it looks by and large that Intel doesn't have enough processing production to actually come out with the CPUs, produce the 14 nanometer chipsets for their motherboards as well, and they're at max capacity. They were kind of really banking on being at 10 nanometers by now, which they failed at, and AMD hopefully will get the upper hand to give us a bit more competition in the CPU market. 
And then let's talk about more competition with AMD, but in the GPU market, because Intel's marketing guy, Chris Hook, has confirmed commitment that they are gonna support Adaptive Sync on Intel GPUs when those launch in 2020. Adaptive Sync is the variable refresh rate technology that you'll find in things like FreeSync or in the proprietary version of G-Sync, but uh, hopefully Intel is gonna go the actual like free FreeSync route, which will be nice. That's kind of what they're committing to. So yes, Adaptive Sync, Intel GPUs, win for everybody, open standards, NVIDIA, you can go fly a kite with your giant overpriced G-Sync modules, even though this mount monitor right here has G-Sync. I got it, I got it, okay? It wasn't gonna fall off the table. You were gonna fall off the table. Now it's time for NVIDIA graphics cards news. I know you guys have been waiting for this. We took a little bit of a break from it last week because we didn't want to seem like that's all we could talk about because it's not. I have a variety of discussions that come out of my mouth. I'm a man of many talks, plethora of info, words many, greatness. Thoughts abounding. <laughs> <laughs> Great words, I have the best words. So there's actually a good bit of information from NVIDIA directly from NVIDIA's Director of Technical Marketing, Tom Peterson. He gave a bunch of info that we could expect as far as performance and the pricing of the cards and how maybe, maybe NVIDIA didn't do the best presenting information at their actual unveiling of the RTX cards. No, really, we didn't dedicate an entire video complaining about how they didn't really give us a whole lot of information. That never happened. Anyways, NVIDIA, thank you for owning up to it. But they also say that while the pricing of the cards, which they quoted as being $100 to $200 lower than what they're actually selling for, Tom Peterson said that we could expect that the cards will come down in price at some point that he's sure that AIB partners will be selling the cards at what the MSRP they quoted them at and stating quote, but we are working really hard to drive that down so that there is supply at the entry point. We're building a ton of parts and it's natural behavior of the market. So it could be just the supply demand equation working its way into retail pricing, but maybe there's more to it than that. No duh, there's more to it than that. You don't have a launch of a card where the launch prices are higher than what you're saying it's at. There's no supply demand happening there when there's no there's no demand taking place because you're only c controlling the supply aspect of the equation. You're saying, here are our cards, here are the prices. There's no time for the market to readjust those prices. That's a bunch of malarkey. You set them way too high, the prices are higher than you said on stage, and it's just garbage. I don't like it, NVIDIA. You lied about the pricing. Maybe just come out and say that. I don't know. But then let's also look at his statements on performance with regards to the cards. He stated that the Turing cards on a normal comparable to comparable level with Pascal should be around 35 to 45% over the 10 series equivalent without ray tracing or deep learning super sampling, which is kind of meh, especially when you're paying over 50 to 100% more in total cost from the 2080 Ti to the 1080 Ti or the 2080 to the 1080, the total price increase does not at all justify that regular performance bump. And even when you add ray tracing, which we've already talked about in other videos, yes, this is a great technology. Yes, deep learning super sampling is amazing, but for how few games actually support it and how few games will likely come to support it considering the fact that the majority of game developers develop for consoles, it's not likely that this is gonna turn into some prevalent thing where you have to pay that much of a premium for it. If they would have launched the cards at the same levels where they're at now, no complaints on pricing. But the fact that they've jacked them up so high and we're only seeing 35 to 45% is a bit frustrating in my opinion. What do you all think? That's, that bothers me. Then we also have some leaked benchmarks. If we look at the 35 to 45% quotes from Nvidia directly, we're gonna take a look at some other stuff. Video cards posted a leak score of a 2080 Ti in Time Spy, which came out to 12,825 points with the 2080 Ti. Doesn't mention which 2080 Ti it would be, whether it's Nvidia or AIB, but it only performed 25% better than our 1080 Ti in the office, not even our fastest 1080 Ti, which one did we test it with, Tink? Yeah, we tested it with the Palette Jetstream, not even the fastest 1080 Ti we have in the office. We didn't overclock it, just ran it stock. 25%, that's all of the, it's still 50, it's still like 75% more expensive. Doesn't make any sense. 
And also, if you look at the video card's responses in the comments, they're basically backing up things that we've heard behind the scenes, and that's no reviewer has drivers for these cards yet. So the fact that anybody's able to test these is a little sketchy. We've also heard information that maybe AIB partners haven't even finalized their cards, which is why we're seeing so few models coming out because NVIDIA is not providing them with enough specifications for them to actually develop the cards that they're supposed to be putting out there in the first place. Which leads us to another set of benchmarks, which was uh, leaked by a Turkish YouTube channel, PC Hokasi TV. And then when it was taken down, Joker Productions put out a video on it. Again, showing between 25 to 50% performance increase depending on which game you're talking about, which is fantastic if true, except for at the pricing and then the total overall difference is around 38% which first of all, definitely for a 38%, over 38% increase in pricing, not really worth it in my opinion. And then also likely don't have drivers. I'm not sure I can trust these benchmarks. You guys can check out the video by Joker Productions if you wanna see the source hand material, but it's not something that I would put a whole lot of stock in just yet. Or it's by Nvidia intentionally presenting disinformation so that like we think things are worse than they actually are, or I don't know, I'm not. Until, until I hear that reviewers have actually gotten drivers for these cards, I'm not gonna hold too highly to the fact that we're getting leaks right now because they're either disinformation, fake information, or somebody is letting things slip in a really weird way. We've got 17 days to wait. I'm gonna wait 17 days. Are you guys gonna wait 17 days? I've rambled on, I love you too. And that's gonna wrap it up for all the hot news we have for today. It was a lot of GPU news, which I'm sure you guys still love and adore. Let me know what you thought of anything that we talked about down in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our sponsor, betterhelp.com forward slash UFD to get some affordable, professional, secure online counseling at your convenience. Support the channel, support yourself. Win-win for everybody if you ask me. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Don't forget to get subscribed. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You guys are amazing. I'll see your smiling faces in the next video. Love you too.